I got a question for you. How many are moving forward knowing that God is a promise keeper? That God is a promise keeper. When God says something, he will not back off of it. He will not relent. Even when we don't keep our part of it, he's still a covenant keeper. He's still a promise keeper. I want you to turn your Bibles over to the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verses 19 and 20 from the New King James Version for part 27 of the series, Moving Forward. How many of you have been blessed with this series? 26 weeks and now 27, and God continues to tell us, I want you to move forward. I don't want you to look back. I don't want you to look to the side. I don't want you to get weary in well-doing because in due season, if you faint not, what I said will manifest. Woo! I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the manifestation. I can almost taste it. I can smell it. I dream it. I think about it. I drive about around it. Hallelujah. I was there on Friday, drove down to to have thy way, land, sea, and air. Then I stopped with the man of God just to talk a little bit. And we're getting our brakes trucks all ready. Hallelujah, because money cometh. Hallelujah, with a mission. It comes with a mission. It's not for foolish spending. It's with a mission to carry out the mandate of the kingdom. Glory to God. I want you to catch this as we turn to the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19 and 20, New King James Version. That there is no reason or excuse for us not to believe God and take him at his word. There's no reason, no excuses. We can't make an excuse. God is faithful. He is true. And he never breaks his word. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you're there already. I gave you more than enough time. And it says, God is not a man that he should lie. See, when we're dealing with God, we're not dealing with a man. You know, man will say something and then all of a sudden go, well, you know, I, but brother, you know, I've been praying about it. And, you know, I kind of, I believe that the spirit of the Lord, don't you use the spirit of the Lord falsely. You said it, swear to your own hurt. So don't say nothing that you really don't mean and won't carry out. Because, you see, you're only as good as your word. Ooh, that was delicious. You're only as good as your word. But man tends to say what they want you to hear. With an ulterior motive. I mean, I tell you right now, many times with my wife, I'm talking, and, and I really don't want her to know that I did eat that double cheesecake with strawberries and whipped cream. So she said, so what? And I go, <laughs> she asked me what I had for lunch. I can't lie. I wanted to tell her that I had a salad with some chicken. <laughs> but I had a double shake with cheesecake and strawberries and whipped cream. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. And she looks at me. She goes, oh, what? Of course, I'm exaggerating. I didn't have the shake and I didn't have the strawberry cheese. I just, just want you to know. But, 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 but the bottom line is, I can't lie. But I did have banana cream pie the last time. She said, what you have for dinner? Banana cream pie. She said, what? I said, well, the bananas are, are high in antioxidants. And the whipped cream was organic. So I try to talk it out. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it did have some eggs in it. So there was protein. Amen. So, so you know, I tried to talk it all out. And she looked at me. She goes, right. Mm -hmm. She said, we're going to see when you're at, when, when he tells you to do 10 push-ups, you can only do two. And then you start, you start getting dizzy. That's your fault. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on. I remember one workout. We were working out. We, we joined her. We were working out. And one person, they, they must have ate, like, everything under the kitchen sink. And he was having them do some burpees. And then all of a sudden, she went to the side of the building. Blah, blah. He go, what happened? Oh, everything came up. Well, it doesn't sound cute. But the bottom line is, whatever's in there, woo, oh, my shit. It got to come out. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do it? And will he not do? Nor has he spoken, or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Behold, 
I have received the command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version, and then I'm going to expound a little bit on it as we're going into part 27 of moving forward. God is not a man that he should tell or act a lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised. For what he has promised. Has he said it and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Think about the God you serve. In other words, he's taking you out of the picture. He's not doing it because you're not doing it. He's God. He doesn't function from the same level that we're used to functioning in the, in the realm of the natural. Even when we fail, God said, I, I, I don't operate like you operate. I'd operate from another level. But I want you to come up hither to another level because I made you a new creation with the capacity, capability, and power to be able to function that when you say yes, it is yes, and you don't back off, and you don't back up, and you don't make an excuse, and you don't falter in that which God has said. Well, Pastor, I'm trying to get there. I understand. But th- let me tell you something. You don't try this. You operate from it by faith. And you can. And he says, Behold, I have received the command to bless. God is saying, I've received the command. I got to bless. What is the blessing of the Lord? The blessing of the Lord. Glory to God. The Bible says, maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. And guess what? It's in all three dimensions, spirit, soul, and body. It's in all three areas. Your spirit, if, if your spirit is aligned, your soul will come into alignment through the word. And as it becomes aligned with the word, that's anointing that's in the blessing will continue to be released to cause your mind to be solidified or established in the righteousness that God gave you. Because the Bible says, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. And then he tells us in Isaiah, and you shall establish yourself in righteousness, and you shall be far from any evil thought or, f- or falsehood. God, God makes it plain. He says, I've given you the ability to operate like I operate. But most people don't believe that. Most of us battle with that. Because we don't see, we we see the separation between God and man. And God said, you're not just a mere man. As I am, so are you in this world. You better turn to somebody and say, as he is, so am I. That's why when a man calls me up and he says, the Lord said, I want, I want, I'm called to marketplace. The Lord said, this is my new business, and it's going to reap over millions of dollars every year, and I'm going to do thus and so. And he says it, and guess what? I didn't think, oh, he, he, he's, I know he's just talking by thinking and hoping. No, he's speaking what God said to him, and I believe what God says, and I know that God will carry it out through him as long as he stays lined up with God. Think about it. There's no reason. Think about it. Think about it. Listen, 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 listen. How is it that one man of God in our house is working commercially with a bunch of trucking companies and God causes such increase on the same street where he was with such a monstrous place? You're going like, oh, my God, how much more? Well, how much can he really stretch his faith to believe God to give him the best mechanics in the country, if not from around the whole country, to come and work for him while he sits and takes care of his business and say, okay, you know, guess what? Honey, come on, it's me and you. We're not going on a sabbatical. We're going on kingdom expeditions. We're going to carry out what God said. And guess what? And money becomes no object because, you see, if you sow your life into what God gave you, there's a time for the harvest of what you sowed to bring forth a harvest of that which you sowed. The thing is, will we wait on the Lord to that point where we won't quit? Because the closer you are to your victory, to your manifestation, to your harvest, the greater the pressure that will come and resistance from the enemy to see if you really believe what God said. 
God said to me this morning, he said, David, I want you to be aware of three things while I was getting freshened up. He said, I want you to be fully aware of who you are. I want you to be fully aware. I want you to be, I want you to think the moment you get up as I am, so are you. There's no difference aside that I am God and you're not. But on this earth, because you represent me, you're everything I say that you are. So I'm sitting there going, oh, man, that's good. I'm filming the, and he says, okay, now, that's number one. That's it. I want you to be aware. Then he said, I want you to be so mindful of that awareness. I want your mind to wrap itself about around the reality of my word that I gave you. He said, not everybody will believe me, so I look for a true worshiper. <gasps> he said, I look for a true worshiper. And you know what a real worshiper is? A worshiper is one that's so mindful of him that he said, whatever I do, however I think, whatever, it's got to be him. Because you see, the world wants your mind so twisted and turned to the world system that you cannot believe God. That's the assignment of the devil. That's the assignment of his fallen kingdom. Because then he'll have you at his grips. See, God has to allow what you allow. So when sickness comes, if you allow it, well, you know, I'm trying to do, you know, the, you know, that, man, 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 man. you can't mix yourself between two opinions. It's either what God said or what the world said. Come on. That's what the Lord said through my son that came here two weeks ago. He said, whose report will you believe? What are you going to believe? Get to Where are you going to stand on? Because you can't stand in two waters. You got to stand in one and stay there. And you can't be silent about it either. You've got to make some ruckus. The devil got to know that you are so fully persuaded that nobody can turn what God said. Even if you walk alone in the natural. But many times you're going to walk alone. Because even the folks closest to you are like a little too extreme. A little too out there. This, this, this. And sometimes it seems frustrating because you see what they can't see. Oh, you want, really? Yeah, okay. He said, tell them. See, you have two sites of vision. You have the natural vision where you see. Because God created us to be able to see. We, we see in the natural. And isn't it beautiful to be able to see? But then we have spiritualized to see in the realm of the spirit. And when you can start to really live and see from the realm of the spirit, God will show you stuff that you, you have not seen manifested in the natural. That's why God say, listen, baby, you don't have to be working that job for the man night and day. I mean, you working your, your, yourself to to, to the, the stress level and everything. They're making all the money, and they give you a little something, and then you're sitting there going, oh, oh, oh my God. And God said, no, I made you to have business ish. And you put, your, you put your time into it, and it will cause the resources. It's called residual income that will be coming at your door, at your checking account, at your house, in your mailbox, coming to you. Because he said, I've given you a higher assignment. I've given you a higher calling. Man. You have a double set of eyes. I said it in the beginning when we were over here singing with the song. With the eyes of the Spirit, you can transform into, you can go beyond time. Sometimes I see things, if I told people, they go, maybe that's the acid trip you went on, but I never went on that acid trip. No, because people always try to logically reason out, well, you, you know, you used, used to use, you know, illegal substances and do this and do that. But the devil's a liar. That person died. I'm a new creation in Christ. The natural mind will always try to reason out why you see what you see. But God is saying to us, you can see things that you could not see with your natural eyes. And if you stay looking at the things that are unseen, but we look not, that's scripture says, but we look not at the things that are seen. In other words, we're looking with the spiritual eye into the realm of eternal 
where everything that is there has already been set aside for you to manifest here in the natural. Because you see, you cannot defeat your enemy in the natural. He will whip you all the time. He will take advantage of you. But when you go up to the realm that you were ordained by God and predetermined and created from, you whip them every time. Every time. That's why you have to be very mindful of who you hang with. You're special people. You can't be. Sometimes we're around our family and they're, th they're sending the same signs that the enemy is using to throw at you. And then we're, we're bound by what they're saying. We're bound by what they're saying. And we don't want to offend nobody. Listen, I'm not here to offend, but I'm here to stand. And if I offend some folks in the midst of it, that's their problem, not mine. Because I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm just trying to help somebody to see there is a place where you got to stand. And if you don't like that, I'm not a politician. I'm a kingdom child of God. I'm going to say what God said. That doesn't mean I can't get involved with politics. That means that I have to be able to stand in the political systems of God and his kingdom and say, God said this is the truth, and that's what I stand for. Don't send letters. I'm not reading them. But saints, moving forward, understand that God and his servant sovereignty will use people and things. If you go back to chapter 22 of Numbers, you'll find that God uses a wicked prophet, a true prophet called Balaam. Balaam was a true prophet, but he was wicked. Wicked. Why? He was twisted to be able to say what he wanted to say, depending on how he would get favor. And so here, God speaks to him and say, I want you to tell my people, that I am the God who does not lie. That what I say comes to pass. I am, listen, I have to do it. You see, you got to understand something about God is not a covenant breaker. If God said it, he has to do it. That's what he has to do because he's God. The devil will lie. People will lie, but God cannot lie. He's not a man and he's not a fallen spirit. He is your creator, the creator. He's the one that lives inside of you and is there to help you carry out your assignment. Moving forward is not natural, it's supernatural. Moving forward is not that you're going to fight some devil. He's already defeated. Your biggest battle is with your mindset, how you think. How you've been trained by the systems of the world from the moment you were born. I, I don't want to rock the boat, rock the boat, baby. I don't rock the boat. I don't want, you know, I, I, wanna be, I just want to be good with everybody. You can't be good with everybody. Somebody's going to be hating on you. Somebody's not going to like you. Somebody will be jealous of you. Somebody will be dogging you whether you like it or not. They'll be smiling in your face. Oh, I love you, Sister Wanda. You know, you're a God bless. Who she thinks she is driving that new car. All got her hair all done up, all looking up. Oh, my God. Think she fooling somebody. That's your Sister Wanda. I've been praying for you. And the Spirit of the Lord goes, See? See that spirit of Jezebel, that lying spirit that's upon that person? And they're, they're, listen, they'll be the first one. Shot, shot, bomb, bomb, bomb. The Bible says test the spirit. Not everything that says, Lord, Lord. And listen, we, we keep it real up in here. We got to know. So here God uses a man, a prophet, a wicked prophet called Balaam. That we see a lot. Sometime in the church, we see, oh, this prophet so-and-so. Listen, you better test that spirit. But think about this. Here, Balaam is told by God to do something. And in chapter 22, he, he, he gets a call from the king, Balak. 
in the valley says, listen, if you will curse the people of Israel, I will give you my house full of gold and silver. Not just any house, my house. So he says to the king, oh, no, I can't do that. But his mind was all right. <laughs> you know how rich I'm going to be? I'm going to hook up to this political system, and, man, they're going to bless me because I'm with them. But I've got to look like I'm in between. What happened? He takes off with the prince and two other helpers with his donkey. And they're going. And, boy, the Bible records, read in, in chapter 22, that God became angry with him. And then God sends an angel with a sword who stands in the way of a donkey. And he, he stands there. Now, think about it. The donkey has spiritual eyes to see the, to see the angel. And this brother who's a prophet can't see nothing. Because, you see, when you're wicked and twisted and you're playing games, you're blinded in the spirit to be able not to see what's real truth. Sometimes God shows you something. Listen, I'm going to confirm it. Hallelujah. Hear that, Pastor Carmen, because I heard that's for you. You'll see folks that get around you. They're saying all the right stuff. And at the same time, they're not even real. And God said, but I give you spiritual eyes. And I've seen it many times that she saved my tail from getting into something because I saw the natural part of something and said, whoo, if I hook up with that, this is what's going to happen. This is years ago when I started ministry. She said, baby, I don't, you know, we say, we say here in our circle, you know, I don't feel it in my spirit. It's just something. But she had already seen. And when that thing started falling apart, she didn't go, I told you so, but I thank God I didn't move that way. So, men, men, look up at me. I know sometimes your wife drive you up a wall, but listen to what she got to say. Mm, you might not like it sometimes. You're like, mm. But I always say the closest voice to the Holy Ghost is right there. But I thank God, and I tell them many times, I say, I thank God I can't put a price. You are priceless. You're priceless. There's not enough money on the planet to pay for you. And if you'll value the one that God's given you, you will live a whole different life. That was for some of you men right there. Because God said, I've given you the best. Ooh, I heard the song, giving you the best that I want. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> That's the way God made me with music, and I, I, just, I just hear it. I can just start playing it, you know. But anyway, here, what happened? The donkey stops right at the tracks. Nah, I ain't moving, man. That angel going to take me out. And what happened? Balaam takes and he hits, hits the donkey. The donkey turns aside like, don't go that way. You're going to get killed, yo, dog. You're going to get killed. You have no idea. Did you see the size of that sword that donkey had? I'm, this is my interpretation. <laughs> Woo, that, that angel about eight feet tall, he'll kill you. <laughs> and there's the donkey. And, man, there goes Balaam again. <clears throat> Bam, hits it. And, and I've read enough with what, you know, some of the commentaries and theologians say. They say that God spoke through the donkey. It wasn't that the donkey had reason in mind, but God spoke through the donkey and said to him, why aren't you obeying what I say? And then he says, why, the donkey says, why are you hitting me three times? And I said to myself, you should have hit him back. But the matter of fact, the Bible does say that he stepped on his foot and crushed, messed him up. No juegue. That would have been something Laura would have done. She would have been sorry, say, praise God. Fuck, I go here, I eat him better. Go inside. We'll ask Silas. We'll ask Silas after when he get out and start walking around and go, oh my God. Anyway. But wait, wait. I'm bringing this story for a reason. When you've gone to the edge of where you think God's not going to come through, that's how God spoke to me about this. He said, when it seemed like everybody that promised and said, that they were going to do, and they were going to carry with you, and they were going to move with you. Then all of a sudden, everybody just backs off and just looking. Show me, show me. Let me see what you got. Then I'll have. No, 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 no. God said, but I will come through. I've got you. I didn't give it to everybody. I gave it to you.
to you. When God gives it to you, even when somebody said, you know, the LOV conference is over. You, you got to close that thing down. This is the last year. And God didn't say that. But she could have said, are you kidding me? Ain't no money in it. Got to deal with all these crazy women for a whole, for, ah. <laughs> My LOV uh, ladies, they say green and then it turned red. Oh my God. She didn't say that. I'm just saying it. Because we all got high and low. I get the men. Oh, men, we're going to do. <laughs> I, I got to work this week. <laughs> I got to do that. I, you know. <laughs> and there goes Nate again, cutting everything, fixing everything. And then he get a little, oh, oh, Pastor, I said, God blessing you with it, dog. <laughs> Because the human factor always messes up the supernatural factor. That's why we got to learn how to function from the super so that we can carry out our assignment and start to manifest. Because God's waiting. He's waiting. He's going, I'm going to allow what you allow. If, you, if that's what you want, I can't. Listen, I gave you the keys. I ain't taking it back. That ain't going to drive until you drive it. That will not move until you move it. And we don't like that. We want to go, y Dios lo va a hacer. You know what that means? And God will do it. See, at one dispensation, God was doing certain things. But when he finished it, he said, okay, toma, Wanda, hazlo, which means, Wanda, do it. I gave you the keys. Take care of it. Go to Galatians chapter 3. God is true to himself. He cannot deny himself. That's who you serve. Now, if you want to operate from the God class, you got to operate like he operates. But you can't do it by your own strength. Because the Bible says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. So your spirit, man, can operate like him, in him, through him, with his own power. So if he told you, this is what I want you to do, this is what I want you to carry out, you're not going to do it of your own strength. You got to do it with his strength. So then you take the knowledge that you have and you yield it to him and you say, okay, this is what I re learned in this system, in this marketplace. Now, I give it to you. Show me what you want me to do with it. Show me. Show me what you want me to do and how to bring it up to a whole nother level. And when I bring it to another level, then guess what? The resources will come because people, people are called to do and to carry out. So he gives a leader, whether in the marketplace, in ministry, whatever it is, he gives them, and, and all of a sudden, all things come. Listen, whatever God promised us, you and I, Carmen, whatever he promised us in financial resources and all the billions of dollars to carry out our assignment, listen, if God has to take a devil from hell, who's the biggest drug dealer in the cartels of the world, and come and give you billions, God will do it. Because if God could take a Balaam, and cause him to speak the truth. Because he was going another way. But the purpose for the donkey was, you better go and do what God said, or you're going to be gone. Bye-bye. So that's why we can't trip. And whoever he uses, there'll be some folk that God will use that will get on our last nerve. Listen, they will tickle our ear. They will, they will bite our toes and drive us crazy. And God goes, stay in peace. Do you not know that Jesus knew Judas, who he was and what Judas was going to do? Do you not know that Judas was robbing from all those conferences and services that Jesus was doing? All along he was robbing. He was a thief from the beginning. And even then, God still was giving him in a, another opportunity. See, you have to understand. We're dealing with God. That's the beauty of it. And so he's going to use some, he gonna use some crazy, unlike people that you're not going to be like, Ooh. but God will use them in spite of themselves. And that's what he spoke to me this week. That's why I'm bringing this out to you. Because he said, David, you got to move forward. Don't look at anything around you. Because if you do, you will get frustrated. And I know where I was getting, I was starting to get frustrated. Because you know something, when you sow your life into something and you're not seeing the results that you know you're supposed to, 
you start getting bothered with it. And that's why you have to stay in a place of peace, because if you don't stay in a place of peace, it'll eat you alive. It'll tear you to shreds. And no matter where you go, you can go on vacation. You can be in a five-star resort with everything given, and you sit there with your bathing suit and all that oil, you still got your mind in the place and still frustrated. And God said, no, 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 no. This is not something you started. This is something I started and I gave to you. And I hear it. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. And God knows enough not to give you thousands of people that they're going cray-cray. Because guess what? If you can't deal with this, how are you going to deal with thousands? And you will never anyway. Even Barnum Report says no pastor can manage more than 200 people at one time. <laughs> Why? You start growing. You need pastors. You need people to continue to delegate and minister and do. And they got to be people of the same caliber. People that really walk in integrity and truth and in, in morality. Who have real character of God. Because if you give them anything else, you'll have a bunch of babies coming from the one pastor and don't even know it. Ooh that, ooh, that was delicious right there. <laughs> Are you in Galatians chapter 3? Oh, my God, this is so delicious. Hallelujah. Mm. 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 Woo. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 says, Christ has. Christ has. It didn't say he's going to progressively. So when people start talking about progress, I mean process, listen, listen, you are in progress. You're going higher and higher because God finished it. He finished the process so that he can get you into the progress. Religion will always keep you in process. I'm trying to get there. You know, I got to pray 45 hours to see if I, the Lord will answer. No, he said when you call. He answered you. That's why we got to make sure that when we pray, we are praying according to the word, not playing with this. Well, you know, I'm going to try to see if my prayer will get through. And I got, you know, I got to you know, break down the gates of hell. You know, so I get, no, you don't know what you're talking. That's a bunch of religious mumbo jumbo. We're not here in witchcraft. We're not tripping. We have access. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. He is the head. We are the body. We're connected, dog. We are in the anointed. We are in the the way maker. That's why when sickness comes, I tell it, come on, let me let me spank you. Let me spank. I'm gonna spank you. I terrorize sickness in the name of Jesus. And I'm learning to do the same thing in finances because money's supposed to be yours. Not try to come. It's got to. Got to have a sound mind. What is a sound mind? I believe what that word says. I don't care what anybody says. And anybody tries to talk me out of it, I got to let them very nicely know. Listen, leave it alone. No, but I let this theologian, tell the theologian to put it up their nose. I know what I believe. Some people will say they got the healing, they'll never get it. But they really don't believe what God said. Oh my God. Oh, but, oh, that hurt. That, that hurt me, Pastor. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. If you're redeemed from the curse, you have a covering that keeps you from the curse of the law becoming. Well, Pastor, that's the law. But, 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 but there we go again. There we go again. It's not the letter because the Bible says the letter of the Lord killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Ooh, that was. That's the Spirit of God telling us. Say that. The letter of the law. If you try to just naturalize, you know, naturalize the word. Well, you know, that's why you have so many denominations. You have so many different people thinking about what. Well, the word didn't say that. It said this. No, no, no. What did revelation knowledge by the Spirit of God say? 
or a spiritual richness, it says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who blesses with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places through Christ Jesus. So a spiritual blessing. But everything came from the Spirit. The gold, the silver, the diamonds, the earth, the waters, the Everything was created from the realm of the spirit. So everything spiritual blessing means everything in the spirit and in the natural. Oh, that was delicious. See, 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 because people will try to, they'll try to talk you out of your blessing. They'll try to talk you out of your rights and privileges. Then all of a sudden you're over here going, well, he says spiritual blessing. Sha ba 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 ba. That's a manifestation of speaking in tongues. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm happy. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That was Jesus. That the blessing of Abraham might come up upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men. Though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed... No one annuls or adds to it. They talk about covenant. Now to Abraham, verse 16, and his seed were the promises made. God is the promise keeper. He does not say, and to seeds as of many, but as, but as of one. And to your seed, who is Christ. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ is in you. You have him. He says, if you be Abraham's seed, you are heirs to the promise. Was Christ is in me. I'm in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You are not lesser than Christ. You are in Christ. Therefore, you are of his seed. God didn't say, I'm an apple seed or Christ is an apple seed, but you are An orange seed. He said, no, no. If I'm an apple seed, you're an apple seed. Listen, listen. Go to verse 26 and 29. Verse 26 to 29, Galatians chapter 3. And it says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. See, the enemy doesn't want you to know that. And your mind will challenge it because your mind only thinks, well, I was born through my mom and my dad, so that's who I am. No, no, that's how you came in, forming the body. It was the canal by which your spirit would come through. <laughs> and it says, it says, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. The promise. Now, I, 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 was, I was researching the last couple of days, and, and I, 50 promises. Just one hit. There's a lot more. 50 promises. Then you go back to the, to the, the you know, the, the Messianic covenant. You go through all the covenants. There's so many promises that God has given us that we're not aware of. And, you know, because you don't know, you don't put a demand on things. But because Christ is in you, he automatically brings it up if you continue to flow and be aware of him, be mindful of him, and live from him. That's what the Lord's been telling me. He said, be aware, be mindful of me. Right? Be mindful of me. I just operate from you. In everything you do. Don't do anything without me. Because I know better than you. And I've given me you so that you can prosper and increase and grow. See, 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 see. He'll take you to a wealthy place 
naturally and people will give onto your bosom just because you are who God says you are. If you go back, if you, if you just look back into the, into the covenant that God made with Israel over 34 centuries, even though Israel's been captured and gone through all kind of hell and high water, but they've never been completely annihilated and God has still kept his promise. I mean, nothing happens and all of a sudden when, when, the, when the change takes place, who's on top of the world? That little piece of land, no bigger than New Jersey, has got more riches, more oil, more gold, more silver, more diamonds. I mean, the diamond mines are out of this world. It looks like the, the caves are painted with diamonds. It's not because they're all that good. It's because God made a promise and he cannot lie. If he said, that's what I'm going to do with you, that's what I do. Wait, 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 wait. This is, oh, this is so good. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, my pastor, I wish I was born a Jew. No, you're not. You're engrafted in the anointed. You are Abraham's seed. You got even greater. You got even greater, man. Even greater. God says, that's what I want you to see. If you can see that, and the thing is, if it took you 34, 40 years to get there, in one day everything can change. He takes a one gentleman who sees what God showed him, one man, and he tells his brothers and, and family, look, God showed me that y'all are going to be kneeling before me. And then what they, they didn't kill him because God didn't permit it. But in the process of what that man had to go through because God had already processed the system, he started progressing no matter where he was. One minute he's in a prison, next minute he's in the right hand. One minute he's working with the, the top dog, and his wife goes, uh-huh. <laughs> You can ring my bell. He goes, I ain't ringing no bell. I ain't ringing no bell. No, no, no. I know what you're looking at. You're looking at the favor of God. You want, you want that. Because people will mistake the anointing with something else. I mean, I, whoo. How many times I get hit? I get hit. Woo, woo. I go, they want the anointing, man. Get out of here. I don't belong to nobody but right there. And that's it. Amen. God knows you. And what happens? All of a sudden, here he becomes the right hand of the king. And everything that God promised happened. But had he been, oh, my God, I saw them kneeling before me. Now they're trying to kill me. Ah! Enjoy the trip or the journey of life and destiny where God's taking you. Listen, if all you got, and listen, if you don't even have, your backyard is a mess and you have got no front porch, go buy yourself some flowers at Home Depot when they're just about off season, put them in the front, water them and say, oh, look at my garden. Beautiful. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got a couple of broken windows, put a little see-through tape on it, clean it up and say, hey, nice. Come on. Hallelujah. Your car's been wall off with the paint. Go get a spot of spray and just spray a little bit here and there. Make it the best it can. And ride it till you get better. Come on. We always complain about everything. We have the most. We have the most. Come on. We will. Tell me you're not blessed. How many have a television in their house? How, how many got heat? How many ate before it's church service? Come on. Come on. Oh, how, how much, how many have spent a ton of money for Christmas, buying all kind of stuff for everybody? Well, come on, don't be playing with it. You, 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 you see what I'm saying? How, how the Lord is saying, uh, stop complaining. Move forward, man. Over here making excuses for everything. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stop that, yeah, 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 yeah. Go get some roasted chicken and some sweet potatoes. <laughs> Woo! See, but God makes it plain. He goes, you are heirs, according to the promise. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 to 22. Amplified classic. Hope this is blessing your heart. Woo. 
It says, for as many as are, as are the promises of God, they all find their yes answered in him, Christ. The New Living Translation says, all of the promises of God have been fulfilled in the yes and amen. For this reason, we also utter the amen, so be it, to God through him in his person and by his agency to the glory of God. But it is God who confirms and makes us steadfast and establishes us in joint fellowship. Woo-hoo! In joint fellowship with you in Christ and has consecrated and anointed us. Don't try to be consecrated. He consecrated you. See, whenever you try, you fall into religious misconception. I don't try. I am what God says I am. And when I believe that firmly, all of a sudden, the desires to do anything contrary to what he consecrated me or set me apart to, I can't do it. Because you follow what you love. You follow what you enjoy. I'm not in duty with God. I'm in devotion. I'm in love with God. Because I'm in love, I follow his command. I follow what he's doing. You see, if you catch the way God operates, because God is love. Everything operates from love. The principal thing that you will catch about God. I, I, I heard a man of God talk about having an out-of-body experience. He had fever for over two weeks to the point where he just fainted and he basically passed, came out of his body. He said, when he came out of his body, and I know the man personally, I've talked to him. He said to me, he said, man of God, all of a sudden I saw I saw the Lord. He said, I couldn't tell you the image of his face and all because he was so much light. All I could see was beaming eyes of pure fire and glory. And he said, I felt the love I had never felt in my life. And he said, I asked God, what? And God said, all is summed up in him. And then he went right back into his body. And he said, it changed the way I teach and preach the word. Completely. Because if we teach from love, if we preach from love, if we do things with the motivation of love, God is in it. Just a little bit more. And has consecrated and anointed us, endowing us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He has also appropriated and acknowledged us as his by putting his seal upon us and giving us his Holy Spirit in our hearts as a security deposit and guaranteed of the fulfillment of his promise. Man, think about how hard we try to get approval when God's already approved us. I want you to go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. I want to close this out today so that we can go into something that the Lord gave me for next Sunday for Christmas. But I want you to recognize that if we'll take God's word, if we'll take God at his word, he is bound by his word. God is not bound by anything else but by his word. He is bound by his word. Listen, that's why when you go to God, if you bring his word to remembrance, not that he doesn't know it, but he wants you to know, he wants to know that you know where you stand with it. You have rights. You have rights. You have rights as a citizen of heaven. You have rights as his sons and daughters. You have rights as kings and priests. You don't need any other qualification. He has qualified us, actually quantified us. He's made us everything he wants us ever to be. The only missing link to all of it is a new body, which we will have. Deuteronomy 28. Because it talks about the blessings of obedience. And it says, Now, it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, 
to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. You're high above all nations of the earth. God's not going to do it. He already did it. He did the finished work so that you can walk there. Then he says, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. That's Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Can, can, I, can I get you a mental picture? Imagine you being a magnet. You're a magnet in the spirit. You're a magnet. Favor comes to you. Blessings come to you. Anointing comes to you. Money comes to you. Healing comes to you. Attachment, love, peace, joy. All these things come to you. It's not that you're running after it because the one who's in you is love. And love brings it to himself because it all belongs to him. And so if it belongs to him, it belongs to you by inheritance. <laughs> woo -hoo -hoo! Woo! Oh. You can eat on that. Oh, my goodness. You can eat good on that. Woo, my goodness. You see, but you got to take that scripture. It belongs to me. You got to put your name all over this. If you see some of my Bibles, I got my name all over everything. I believe this stuff. I was asked by a minister of the gospel that I totally, I highly respect and honor. And he asked me, what is your, what is the thing you love to do the most? And I really wanted to say, play my guitar. Because I really love worshiping the Lord. I love playing. We have no idea. When we have no, no musicians and things here, I, I want, oh my God, I see. Then he said, what do you really love the most? I said, what I love the most in my life is to be able to preach the gospel. <laughs> to be able to have the ability by the Spirit of God to receive revelation and see this word come out and be alive. I don't know about you, but I see this word become alive. It's so alive, I see it in, 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 in I see it real. I, I see it so real, it's tangible. See, see, that's how I see I see it so real. And sometimes when I'm reading, I can go back into time, in the spirit, and see. Something that changed my life was the ability in the early years of our ministry to go to Israel with Pastor, my wife and I, when we went to Israel, changed. And I was told, I was told by a man of God, he said, you and Pastor Carmen can never really teach and preach the word until you go to Israel. Because the Bible becomes alive. To walk those same streets where Jesus walked. To see, to see where David hid from Saul. It just changes your life. But now it helps me even more because when I read the scripture, I can see it. See, 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 see. But catch it, catch it. Listen, listen, listen. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you shall be the fruit of your body. See, if your body's not producing the fruit that it's supposed to, of healing, of wholeness, you need to speak to your body. You need to let it line up with the word of God. You can't let the world and people tell you, well, you know, you know, it, it comes with age. You know, you, you, you're 70 years old. You know, it happens. You know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you have a pastor in the now. Yeah, 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 but didn't God do something with Sarah that was out of this world? If he did it with Sarah, don't you tell me he doesn't want to do it with you. But you've got to apply this word. Come on. I got the, I got the same body as 67 telling me things. And I tell my body, shut up. Who are you talking, who are you talking to? talking to you're not the boss i'm the boss my spirit is the boss and i yield to the spirit of god and mine you've got to agree with what the word of god says that's why i renew my mind constantly that's in my body <laughs> you submit because you guess what when you wait on the lord you shall renew your strength what am i doing <laughs> i'm waiting on the lord <laughs> i got the right stuff to put in to get this body renewed Sir, I will. Do not compare yourself to everybody else. 
Do not compare yourself to folks that you know and stuff that has happened around you because that will mess you up. Well, you know, Johnny, that happened to Willie. And, you know, when they got to a certain age, that happened, that I don't care what happened to nobody. I know what happened to me when I saw what the Word of God says. I said, let's eat. This is good, boy. This is good eating. See, this is the kind of food that you want to eat. You can't go back to McDonald's and get a quick, you know, three-point message and just leave. <laughs> Don't work. It gives bad, bad stuff. Bad stuff happens. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Blessed shall, shall be the fruit of your body and produce and the product and the produce of your ground. And the pro produce of your ground and the increase of your herds and the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Now, I know we don't have that, but we do have family and we do have some things around us. Blessed shall be your basket and your knitting bowl. Blessed shall, be, shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies. It said the Lord, not you with a shotgun. The Lord. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall go out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. That's the word says, seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses. Storehouses. So if you got only one, that ain't enough. You got to have storehouses. Some of you need to get a second shed. Come on, Ben, don't play with it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Storehouses. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ooh, that was, I, I, I don't know about you, but I had to park there for a minute. Storehouses. And in all to which you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Well, you might say, well, I'm not looking for a nation, but there might be a house that God wants you to have in Virginia as he gives you the house here in Connecticut so you can operate from here. You might have a house in Florida, one over here, one in Puerto Rico, three, four places that you can go whenever you want to go. But you know where you operate from and where God called you, so you ain't just going and picking up all your stuff and leaving from where God assigned you. What's wrong with having more than one? Several. Amen? There's nothing, nothing wrong with having. Amen? And a car over there and the SUV and money over there and houses over here. And there. Well, well, Pastor, were you planning just to stay on earth? No. Until he comes, I must occupy. Until he comes. It's all his anyways. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he swore to you, has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will be afraid of you. They'll, 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 don't mess with them. They're God's people. Don't mess with them. If you do something wrong to them, God will deal with it. And you, you don't even pray, Lord, kill them. You, you pray, Lord, give them a second hit. Help them out. Because God is a just God. It's not that he's a, 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 a vengeful God looking away. Oh, I'm going to rip his head off. No, he's a, he's, he's a just God. If they did wrong, God's going to repay the wrong. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land for which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. And the Lord will open to you his good treasure. Woo! Woo -hoo! His good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. One of the things we're going to have to get out of is we're going to have to get out of borrow. I mean, I don't know about you, but I was, I was talking to Brother Jimmy 
uh, yesterday about it. And, you know, I'm getting more. I get texts 25, 30, 35, 40. Texts like crazy. Oh, we already got a line of credit. We want to give you X, Y, Z. Uh, all you have to do is say yes, and we'll give you the money. I mean, credit cards coming through the roof. All kind of crazy stuff. And then you get all the other junk stuff. Hey, we got a gift for you. We want to give you an iPhone 13. The thank you for the, 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 and then you put your information and it rob your identity and you got it all messed up. If it's free, it ain't for you. Stop it because you know it ain't. How many times we just checked it? Check UPS said that they did this. We call UPS. Wrong number. It's not UPS. Just because it looks like, oh, from the post office. No, no. Amazon wants to give you a gift because you bought some stuff. You better call Amazon fine. Because if you call that number, they'll say, this is Amazon.com. We are here to take your money. Please give us $300. <laughs> and they'll suck your brains out. And you give them your identification. What's your date of birth, please? Do we must identify that is your date of birth. And you do? And some guy in Bangladesh is using your credit card with your name on it, saying he's your cousin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, send, the, send the emails to Pastor Carmen. I ain't reading them. <laughs> and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. And why did God put down after other gods? Because he knew when God created man, he created them. He created them to serve an overlord. God is our overlord. You're going to either serve God or you're going to serve the enemy. Because he wants to be an overlord, but he's an illegal overlord. And you can't, there's no gray areas. It's either yes or no. Turn over to the book of Romans chapter 8 and I'll close there. And I hope you've been blessed with this series moving forward. I recommend that you continue to listen to it back and forth. Don't let that word come out of, uh, out of uh, don't let it stop coming out of your mouth. Speak what God said. Verse 16, I'm reading from the, uh, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. It says, the Spirit himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are the children of God. We're his children. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs. Whatever belongs to God belongs to you. Come on, you better say, whatever belongs to God belongs to me. And I have every right to use what he gives me. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering. If we are going to share his glory. In other words, what suffering is it? It's not the suffering of sickness or lack or disease. It's not that kind of suffering. You know what the suffering is? When people say, oh, Tina and Mel, you guys, you guys are Christians. You guys don't do this anymore. I, don't, I can't believe you. I mean, can you just come with us and party and get a little you know, messed up with us and do this and do that? We had a lot of fun. Remember how we used to have fun? And we stay out and you're like, I don't, I don't do that, but I'll invite you to church. Uh, you guys are old fogies. You guys are just, you're just totally out. Or your family will have a big celebration, but because they know that you don't do the things you used to do, you're exempt from the celebration. And then they call you party poopers. <laughs> you know it's true. And then when you go, they have a little section for you. To, that's your area. That's your area. I ain't saying no more. I'm going to stop. I'm just leave it alone. Look, I'll go. I, I got no problem. Amen? 
but you, you deal with that because sometimes you want to be around certain things and, and you want to love and, and people just mis, misunderstand. They think you're religious when you're not. Catch, catch it. But what of that? For I consider that the suffering of this present time, this present life are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and conferred on us. For the, even the whole creation, all nature waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be made known, wait for the revealing, the disclosing of their sonship. The whole world is waiting. What are they waiting? They're waiting to see you act like your daddy. Because you see, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is also your big brother. He's the first among the anointed. What a beautiful thing to know. Wait a minute. What? I'm here? That's why I'm telling you. Be aware. Be mindful. Operate with it. Operate. I'm freezing everybody up in here. Can we all stand to?